On this ESU8 Wednesday webinar, I, Katie Morrow, hope to share with you some ways to use the iMovie app, either for Mac or iPad, to connect with Marzano. In doing this, you're not just using digital video projects for technology's sake, but rather seeing better gains with your students, whether it's engaging them in the learning process, or measuring or assessing what they know, or being able to connect with those students and your entire um, school team on a higher level. iMovie is just the tool to do it. It comes built in on the Mac and or the iPads, and so access is easy. And these are just some ideas to get started with um, projects that you could accomplish with this tool. The presentation that I'm sharing is in the form of an Adobe Spark page. So this web page is something you can revisit later on and explore at your own pace. I'm going to scroll through it now and share the highlights. So surpassing the glitz and glamour of the app and ensuring that we are impacting learning. One way to do that, in my mind, is to use Marzano's elements to frame or purpose your digital video projects. I've identified eight Marzano elements that I think can be directly impacted with iMovie. Um, the ideas for iMovie use within that element and example products. And I just chose one for each of the eight elements that I selected. And it's just meant to be a starting point to help you think about the possibilities, but definitely um, the opportunities exist for you to do even so much more and take it in completely different directions than maybe I even originally thought. Be free, feel free to share those ideas with me even beyond this Wednesday webinar. There's a link here to the Marzano Research Compendium so that our schools who do have access can log in and dig in even deeper to each of these identified Marzano elements. And the first one is element three, celebrating success. The indicator that we would know if we're practicing this would be to celebrate success and monitor the extent to which my actions affect students. iMovie is the perfect vehicle to help celebrate the successes in the classroom. Some things that you could do with iMovie to help celebrate success include creating a whole class iMovie project at the end of a unit, maybe a lip dub or a class wrap or a news broadcast to recap an event or even a unit of study that you just completed and then celebrate that you have learned that. Um, definitely announcing class accomplishments with iMovie trailers or maybe a short iMovie that's then published to YouTube or some other publicly visible space so that you can share those celebrations with the outside world as well. And maybe you would create a class or department iMovie that's more in the form of a documentary or an inf infomercial to promote um, the positive things that happen within your classroom. Similar to this was our language arts department board report one month at O'Neill High School. And we obviously won't watch the whole thing here, but I'll hit play so that you can get a little bit of a taste of what a celebratory iMovie might look like. We don't read and write poetry. As you scrub through this, you can see that different English blogs, teachers news. talked about what they did in their curriculum and their, their section. There's even interviews with students. Uh, celebrating Understand certain projects and, to and topics on any kind of a scale. This would definitely be the used body of a speech, which to celebrate the successes in your area. The next element that I feel can be accentuated through the use of iMovie is element five: formal assessments of individual students. The indicator here is that I use formal assessments of individual students to determine students' proficiency with specific content and I monitor the extent to which students respond to assessment with guided feedback and instruction. So um, iMovie is a great tool or vehicle to, to get that more complete picture of a student and where they're at with their learning. Um, some ideas for using iMovie include asking students to show what they know through an iMovie project, maybe completing a end of the, the topic, end of the unit, a project that shows what they've learned or what they can teach to another student after um, learning that content. 
You can also do a jigsaw where students divide up vocabulary terms perhaps and teach each one in the form of their iMovie, but therefore at the same time you're able to assess their learning. When you use iMovie projects for assessment, it's a good idea to provide a list of required elements and or a rubric for what should be included so that you can know and the students can know themselves if they've demonstrated mastery or not. Here's an example of a science video showing what they've learned about the nervous system. How do you remember the way to your friend's house? Or blink without knowing? Or feel pain? You can do all these things because of the nervous system. Hi, my name is Mr. Emmy. My name is Sydney. Today I'll be teaching Sydney about the nervous system. Yay! You get the idea there. And the con content that was covered by the students shows if they've really mastered at a higher level, not simply just a regurgitation of, of key facts or multiple choice questions. Marzano Element 8, Recording and Representing Knowledge, is another great focal area for using iMovie in the classroom. When doing this, students can record and represent content. And as the teacher, we can monitor the extent to which our actions affect students' performance. Using iMovie to record and represent knowledge could take the form of asking students to show what they've learned in an instructional video to other students, much like the last example. It could also um, be a, the opportunity for students to take notes via iMovie. They could simply add text and images and video clips to represent what they're learning as they're learning it. iMovie can be just as easy of a note-taking device as any word processing app. Let's watch an example of students showing their um, recording and representing content through this iMovie project on Molecules, Molecules of, of Life. Life by Marissa Lindy. We, as humans, eat food every day, but what is the purpose of that food? We eat food in the building blocks of that food when we eat together to make living things. This person's body was made from the building blocks that came from food, like this hot dog. These organic macromolecules are the chemicals of life. Compounds compose a more than one type of element, containing carbon that are typically found in living things. There are four groups of organic macromolecules. They are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. A carbohydrate is called an organic compound because it is made up of a long chain of carbon atoms. That iMovie in particular isn't necessarily um, very extremely creative. It's just that showing um, content that's key and important um, for the students learning and I think that that's a great example model to show because if again if a student is representing what they've learned in the form of an iMovie we can see that le higher level of mastery. The next Marzano element that I want to uh, connect to iMovie is previewing where students can preview and link new knowledge to what has been addressed and as the teacher we can monitor to the extent to which students are making linkages. So this might be a great example of um, you as the teacher creating an iMovie before you teach that next unit or topic. Um, in addition, asking your students to create an iMovie preview for next year's content um, would be a great way to both review and preview at the same time with iMovie. An iMovie trailer would be a perfect uh, vehicle to do that, um, highlighting key concepts ahead of time without too much emphasis on the complete story, just giving a quick snapshot and overview of what is to come. Here's an example of an iMovie preview on a social studies topic. We the people of the United States. In order to form a more perfect team. Establish justice. Ensure domestic tranquility. Provide for the common defense. Promote the general welfare. And secure the blessings of liberty.
Again, you can watch all of these vid videos in fuller detail um, it, on your own time, but you can get a sense here of how simple it would be to take the preamble of the Constitution, uh, piece it together in iMovie, and then use that to preview the next uh, unit for your students. Get them engaged, connect them, and help them link to content with a little bit more of a concrete picture of what is to come. By the same token, reviewing content is just as important. Here, you engage students in a brief review of content that highlights critical information, and you monitor the extent to which students can recall and describe previous content. So for students to show this, this element with iMovie, they could create a review video prior to the unit test. You could, again, jigsaw topics and ask students to create short iMovie videos and save them to a class YouTube channel or pin them on a Pinterest board so that everyone in the class can review each other's short iMovie videos and therefore get additional um, reviewing skills um, happening and additional reviewing practice occurring. Another reviewing activity with iMovie would be to ask students to reenact key scenes from a historical event or a novel and see if they're able to review the main storyline. Here's a great example from some 8th graders after reading the short story, The Hitchhiker. Remember, be careful. Don't fall asleep at the wheel. I know, Mom. And no picking up any hitchhikers. I know. I'll be careful. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I know you want to watch that one on farther, but what's really great about it is it's not the entire story. You can just see those uh, main points or highlights of what the students had read and how they remembered what they had read and therefore are reviewing that key content. Using iMovie to reflect on learning is another great um, strategy that connects to both Marzano's elements and um, just good elements of good learning as well. Engaging students in reflecting on their own learning and the learning process and monitoring the extent to which students self-assess their understanding and their effort. So iMovie, the perfect tool to just open up a quick video clip and have students talk about and reflect on what they did throughout the process of learning. What worked for them, what didn't work for them, um, maybe things that they would have a chance to redo if they were offered that option to have a do-over, see where they uh, maybe needed more support and what they would want to have happen the next time they're presented with um, a learning challenge. You could also use iMovie as a reflection off option for students whom writing that written reflection is, is a challenge. They could just do it through the form of video with iMovie. Um, another um, example of using iMovie for video reflection is to have students narrate a behind-the-scenes explanation of how they learned key concepts or how they completed a science lab, for example, even with still pictures, but then using the students as a voiceover to narrate what went on and what they did in each stage. Again, reflecting on that learning develops that metacognition skill that we know will lead to higher learning outcomes for our students. Here's an example of student reflection videos in iMovie um, from elementary PE from quite a while ago, but you can just get a sense of how powerful it is. I love the iPad because it's very simple. It maybe three buttons and it's, you're there. When I get home every day, the first thing I do is get the iPod and go do some exercise. Yeah, a lot, and I've been using a lot of the apps and stuff on there. I usually do it with other family members. You can see these aren't scripted. They aren't um, rehearsed. They're just natural and authentic. And it doesn't matter if they're talking about doing exercises with the iPad and PE or a math problem. You, getting that authentic reflection of the learning um, during the learning rather than just the end point in time is really powerful. Marzano Element 31 is providing opportunities for students to talk about themselves. And iMovie is a perfect tool to do that. 
We can provide opportunities for students to talk about themselves and monitor the extent to which our actions affect students' engagement. If we've ever taught middle school, we know that being able to talk about themselves is students' most engaging activity. And iMovie can allow them to create creative iMovies about their own passions, their own um, anything outside that connects to the classroom. They could also use iMovie to interview a family member or a friend about a class topic and add that personal connection um, in iMovie to document and share as well. Here's an example of one from a junior high student. Adorable. Wonderful. Tall. Nice. Studious. Happy. Sweet. Dedicated. Amazing. Lovable. I just try to be myself. With motivational friends and family by my side, anything is possible. When reading a book, you have a visual that runs through your head. I think that we can all see the power of allowing students to create their own or infuse their own um, personality into their movie projects. Whether the end result would be of the writing skills or the storytelling skills or the connection of a personal topic to what they're learning about in, in their textbook, iMovie can be a great tool to do that. And kind of to piggyback on that is element 32 of motivating and inspiring students. We can use activities designed to motivate and inspire students and monitor to the extent to which those actions affect students. And with iMovie, I think that incorporating digital media and that a creative expression and definitely student choice is by default motivating and inspiring to all learners, whether they're reluctant or um, engaged. They're going to be even more engaged when they get the opportunity to do some of these kinds of things with iMovie. It would definitely give students an additional outlet and an opportunity to shine when maybe their traditional skills might be lacking. And this is an example of a science project where the parts of the cell were, in fact, carrying out an extended metaphor. Um, these students happened to be very interested in Minecraft at the time, so their cell was compared to a Minecraft city. And you can see how easily their iMovie project evolved from that initial concept. In our city, we use the cell membrane as the city limits because the cell membrane controls what goes into and out of the cell. In our city, our cell wall compares to a toll booth because it's an extra layering that lets things in and out of the cell. So I know firsthand from experience, when I would, for example, tell my students, you can use Minecraft in your project, that in essence engages them um, and definitely helps them connect. And then they have to make those, those connections to explain and show and demonstrate the learning. So iMovie is a great tool to do the motivating and inspiring of students as well. Um, you may have a totally different impression or uh, interpretation of these Mars Auto elements, but, but hopefully that gives you a few ideas and places to start. And remember, it's not just using the tool itself that makes it better instruction. It's how you use the tool. And these are some ways to frame it in the, the terms and the language of Mars Auto that we, are, um, we have seen successful results with. So if you want to find more video examples like these and even more ideas for using iMovie, uh, one place to go is to is O'Neill Public Schools Student Sharing Gallery on their YouTube channel. But I have some additional helpful links as well. And you may wonder, why didn't I start with these? How to use iMovie in the first place? But these are really um, not the, the key emphasis. No, you know, knowing how to use iMovie isn't the most important ingredient to the success of it. Uh, I think just being open and willing to learn, there's always places to go to get answers to your questions, whether you're asking your ESU8 colleagues to come in and help you or show you how to uh, get started with an app, or whether you're just turning over that control to the students and letting them explore and discover on their own. Um, learning how to use the app shouldn't be the first obstacle to using it. And a proof in, in point here, are these great starter guides that exist for iMovie either on the Mac or the iPad, whichever 
applies to your situation that are available from the Apple Teacher Program. You can download these free books and then read them on either your Mac or your iPad in the iBooks app, and they'll walk you through step by step how to use iMovie so that I don't need to reinvent the wheel here. I just want to show you how to access these. And maybe you don't need to read the whole book, but maybe you just want to flip ahead to a certain chapter. Here it defines the parts of the screen. It, um, on this one, it would allow you to click on each part of the screen and get a little bit more description and definition of how that iMovie environment looks and feels. Your content library, how to navigate the timeline across the bottom, how to work and manipulate it as you're working in iMovie. Setting some adjustment settings for clips, whether they're still photos or videos. And then creating that iMovie. So some simple tasks for um, are linked here in the book to a cer certain page. And you can add additional media. Um, usually in iMovie, it's as easy as drag and drop anymore. Um, you can definitely bring in this practice media and practice with it in the starter guide if you want to feel like you're getting more expert skills um, practiced. Here's how you get started with a new project. Import your media. Building your story. Adding a video clip to your timeline. They actually give you some skills to practice if you want to use their clips. And again, have that kind of teacher-student experience. You can do so with the starter guide. Or you can just take a look at their videos and watch them do it on the pages of the book. So you can see it demonstrated there through these video clips. Adding transitions in between clips. Adding a clip segment to a timeline. Trimming the clip either by pulling the end of it or using a uh, split command. Adding photos with Ken Burns effect. Adjusting the speed of a clip, so playing a clip in slow motion or speeding it up. And then overlaying videos, so putting another video track on top of a, a second video track to do picture in picture or split screen. Or this is how we also accomplish green screen videos in iMovie. So the bottom layer would be your, your background image or video. And then the top layer would have the green background in it. And you would change the mode from cutaway here to green screen. And it would erase the green and you would see through down to that bottom layer. Adding titles, flash and freeze frame, adjusting sound and sound effects, and adding that voiceover where students could narrate and add their voice to the images in their project. Adjusting volume, adding background music, and then even some fine tuning. So you can definitely feel like more of an iMovie expert after using one of these starter guides. Even better, why not allow your students, these are free books in the iBookstore, allow them access so that they can look up answers to questions that they may have themselves and um, look into it a little bit further. So that iMovie starter guide is for Mac. There's also one for iPad. So that, um, and you can also match it with the correct version that you have. If you have iOS 9 or 10, there's a starter guide for each so that the pages look exactly similar to what environment you're working in in iMovie. So I definitely encourage you to um, not feel like you're not an expert in iMovie, but to just try it out and use the resources that are available to um, learn it um, as you go. Oh, there's also a link that I've provided here that is from Tony Vincent that's about using the iMovie trailers, which is a unique project topic or project type in iMovie um, that's really suited well to educational content in my mind because here students don't start with that open-ended empty timeline and have to add all of their effects and clips themselves. Instead they start with a template where they just drop in clips into a pre-made trailer um, format with the music and some graphics and some transitions already there and all they have to provide is the content. Um, Tony Vincent has a great website here full of resources. They have some sample trailer projects, iMovie trailer projects that you can see from um, different classrooms to use as examples even for your students to take a look at. Um, he shows the different trailer templates that are available on iOS and Mac and he's also created these editable PDFs so that if you do choose one of these 
trailer templates. You'll know exactly how long each clip would need to be and how many clips and what types of clips and titles you'd be filling in in each of those. So you could plan it first with a PDF and then build it in the actual iMovie app. And this is a really good process for students to create digital video projects because they have to think ahead of what kind of content they're going to include and not get caught up then in the editing and the multimedia tools, but allow them to focus on that, the content first. Definitely use his tips at the end. And this is just a, a, a rich, rich resource that I definitely encourage you to um, at least take a look at and see if it would fit your next iMovie project in your classroom. And finally, it's the power of digital video is definitely the power of sharing it and the audience that exists beyond your regular classroom walls as well. So there's a simple um, step guide here that I've put out for creating a classroom YouTube channel. And another thing I'd be happy to come out and help you get started with, whether you're publishing student projects there or whether you're just creating playlists of videos that already exist on YouTube in order to more easily share them with your students. A YouTube channel is something that um, learners are used to using, whether they're adult learners or young learners, they're comfortable in that environment, and so you can really use that um, to your advantage to help you organize and deliver content. And then, of course, share those great iMovie projects that you guys create together. So that's it. That are my simple ideas for not just using iMovie in the classroom, but connecting it to the Mar Marzano instructional elements to hopefully um, lead to even better results for your learners and for yourself.